Cancer clinical trials are a type of cancer research that impacts real patients every day here in Nova Scotia and actually around the world. There are research programs that are aimed at finding the next best treatments for cancer, the safest treatments. Uh, they can be trials comparing different treatments, all designed to make sure that we have access to the best treatments possible and that cancer medicine continues to progress. So really clinical trials is the way that basic science research gets translated into real patient care. So all patients on a clinical trial are patients within the cancer center. They can be new patients, newly diagnosed, or patients that we've been following for a period of time and, and with, on a variety of treatments. And it really it starts off with a conversation. And depending on the cancer type, there may be an excellent trial opportunity available for a patient. Unfortunately, not all uh, cancers have trials open for the particular situation at, at all times. So it's still um, uh, an important factor that we look at for every new patient coming in to try and decide, one, if there's a, a right trial for them, two, if they would be eligible for it, and three, especially important, does it have a chance of helping them. There's never been a more exciting time to be a medical oncologist, to be honest, given what's happening in, in our area. The ultimate goal, however, is best care possible and advancing our knowledge. And so the work we do is actually very much part of an entire global process. So many of the trials we do are also being run at other centres in Canada, in Europe, in fact around the world. Um, we're often selected as a priority site in Canada because of the, of the uh, quality of the work we've done here in clinical trials. All the information gets fed into um, the global database and that information with appropriate follow-up and when the end results are clear leads directly back into potential consideration of funding or access for a new treatment or medicine. There are different areas of cancer research of course. Most times when we think of cancer research we think of laboratories, scientists, cells, perhaps animals. We don't always think of research involving people, patients, our neighbors, our sons, our mothers. Clinical trial cancer research is where all the brilliant ideas in the lab actually have a chance to help people. So clinical trials are studies testing new treatments, new ways of giving treatments, or new types of treatments, comparing them to our current treatments to see if one is better than the other. Okay, so it really involves research involving treatments, involving real patients and real care. Without clinical trial work, cancer medicine would still be stuck in the 1950s. None of the improvements in cancer care, none of the new treatments, None of the great ideas from the scientists in the laboratory would ever reach our patients without safety and efficacy documented in a clinical trial, okay? All the brilliant ideas, all the hypotheses would never go anywhere without a clinical trial to support their benefit. And so simply said, without clinical trial research, there'd be no progress it would still be a universally devastating situation. Still devastating for too many, but it, it is, the, the improvements have been remarkable over the past few years. A huge part of clinical trial research has been trying to design treatments given after surgery to optimize the chance of lifelong cure. I'm the director of something called the Atlantic Clinical Cancer Research Unit. And we have a team of 15 people, and I'm going to show you them, who are dedicated fully to clinical trial work. We're the largest clinical trial unit east of Montreal. We're not the only one, very important. Almost every cancer center has a clinical trial unit. Clinical trials are key hubs in terms of what we do, but we certainly are the largest east of Montreal. At any one time, we have 25 to almost 40 clinical trials open for patients across all areas of cancer medicine, whether it's medical oncology, from what I do, radiation, or surgical oncology. And these trials open and close, and it's a constant evolution. So trials are continuously opening and closing. 
We have 60 to 70 new patients that enter a clinical trial every year. Our goal is 120, 10 patients a month. So we're trying to get there. And about 300 to 400 patients, some, some years 500, are actually continuing to be followed up after they've done their clinical trial treatment. Okay, so it's a big, big clinical effort. So sometimes we hear, well, all trials are experimental. All studies are experimental. I don't want to be a guinea pig, which is totally understandable. But very important also to realize that in order for anything to actually become a clinical trial, there's typically years of work. There are multiple organizations, government, regulatory, health authority, that approve a clinical trial going forward. None of these are experiments, essentially. There are a couple of centers in Canada that do do experimental trial work. We don't do that here. The work we do is really based on the shoulders of many people and many groups that have gone before. So really nothing is truly experimental in the way we kind of think about experiments. We're not running experiments on patients. We're giving them access to best possible options. Most people are aware of the common types of treatments for cancer. You have chemotherapy, there's surgery, there's radiation treatment, sometimes hormonal therapy for certain types of cancers, and always uh, helping to control symptoms even if uh, patients are moving to the end of life. So there's, there's a whole spectrum of classic treatments and support. Anybody seen these two faces in the news? Nobel, not the Nobel Peace Prize, but Nobel Prize for Medicine, that's right. That's James Allison and Tajuko Honjo, who just won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2018. What does this have to do with Halifax, guys? Right? We're talking Nobel Prize here. Okay. They won the Nobel Prize because these brilliant minds figured out a couple of key things that have turned the whole world of cancer medicine on, their, on its head. So this beautiful picture, the nasty looking cell is a cancer cell. This cell is something called a T cell, or called a natural killer cell. We have millions of them constantly on the prowl for viruses or bacteria. They are our main force of defense against germs and infection. But they can also help fight cancer. For 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, we've known there's a link between cancer and the immune system, but nothing has really panned out. Clinical trials have shown time and time again that even though we know there had to be something, we couldn't find it because a lot of the immune therapies that we, we were trying, testing did not, were not better than our standard treatment. The only way we knew that was on trials. So what these two minds discovered is that cancer cells can turn off these natural killer cells. The cancer cells can go, uh, can be incognito, so that these natural killer cells just float by them, okay? And what they found was that the reason that happens was because of, of a very specific link between the cancer cell and the killer cell. And that link shut down the killer cells and the first line of defense was breached. What they discovered with these markers led to the development of what's called immuno-oncology. And what, these are, what this area is, is medicine that is not chemotherapy, but that blocks the linkage here and lets the, the killer cells do their job. These medicines do not attack the cancer. They take the foot off the brake for our immune system and tell our immune system to fight the cancer. Okay? And in the past five years, treatments based on this hypothesis from a lab that would have never gone anywhere without clinical trials have changed the treatment landscape for melanoma, for kidney cancer, for lung cancer, now for a certain type of breast cancer, and they're being tested in almost every single cancer you can imagine. Because this is what happens, is that 
when the T cells are able to actually fight the cancer, there is potentially complete and utter destruction. Always some risk, because if the immune system is stimulated, there's always a risk that the immune system also attacks our bodies. So it's not uh, a magic bullet for everybody, and some patients do have side effects that force us to stop treatment with the immune therapy. The vast majority tolerate it very well, and the outcomes are better than ever uh, before in terms of for certain diseases. The clinical trials are a key element of cancer care, not just in the sort of global sense, not just uh, in terms of science, but for real patients on the ground here that we see every day. I had a clinic this morning, three of my patients were, that I saw this morning were on a clinical trial. Okay, so these, this is real research, this is real-time science. And it brings the best clinical research programs to Atlantic Canada. Without a functioning clinical trials unit, us as a medical oncologist would never have access to any of these medicines before the provinces or the country decides that it may fund it. So we have access to some of these medicines years before funding is available through clinical trials. And because of the work that our team does, all patients are followed incredibly closely. And for some patients, that's reason enough to be in a trial. Okay, so they're, they're followed very, very rigorously according to the clinical trial protocol. And in the end, of course, what we're all trying to do is find the next best treatments, right? Not just for us today, but for the future. And again, uh, I just can't emphasize to you enough that no matter what the cancer is, no matter what the kind of treatment a patient's receiving, the best treatments have all come through clinical trials.